The stage is almost set, down to the last seven rounds of the season and so close to crowning a champion. But still we wait and remain in suspense as both ends of the table fight for their individual glory and survival on the J1 League goal zone. Back to regular programming then, just seven games to get through for round 32. Sagan needed to get back in the points as they hosted Shonan. Urawa were also at home to play Gamba. Relegation battles were rife in this round. Yokohama and Tokushima on the docket, with Oita and Vagulta contesting the other. Sagan's defeat to Vortis before the international break extended their winless run to three without scoring. Trying to chase down the last AFC qualification berth, they needed to turn things around as they came up against relegation mired Shonan, who were winless in six. First chance of the game came in the 16th minute, and it was Sagan who had the opportunity. Keita Yamashita brilliantly glancing his header towards the goal, but he couldn't keep it below the crossbar. Just a couple of minutes later and a free kick opportunity for Shonan. Shuto Machino's effort just curled wide. But it was only seconds later that they were pressing on goal again. Taiyo Hiraoka timing his through ball perfectly. Machino gets on the end of it and finishes smartly. Here they are looking for a second now on the stroke of half time. The ball nicely played across the box. It falls to Takuya Okamoto but perhaps a little too excited with his strike, he slices that one over the apex. Shonan resumed their attacking endeavor in the second half. Wellington put through and his right foot shot beats the goalkeeper, but he was a judge to have been offside as the pass was played forward. Sagan were still very much in this one, and as a move developed down the right-hand side in the 73rd minute, Noriyoshi Sakai stretches out his left foot and finds the equaliser. Having got that equaliser, they were now looking for a winner. Tomoya Koyamatsu finds Huang Siokho. His powerful shot, though, saved by Kosei Tani. But there was still time for them to generate one more chance from the 92nd minute corner. The ball eventually falls to Riono Suke Sagara. He goes on a mazy run into the box, but his left footed shot into the side netting. This one remains all square. Urawa are sitting fifth in the table and still in with a shout of qualifying for the Champions League. The hosts took a loss in the cup competition last weekend, but against a Gamba Osaka side that had lost four of their last five, the Reds should still be favourites in this one. Here's Rich Rosh and Rai. Well, to Yamanaka is hugging the touchline. He's got space to whip another cross into the box. Takahiro Sekine with a wonderful opportunity to open the scoring for Urawa. Let's have a look at the bottom of your screen there. Gets a run into that space ahead of Fujiharu. That's a delicious delivery from Yamanaka. Right onto the head of Sakine. He needs to bury that. Once a ball played into space for Isaka. A good save by Higashiguchi in the end. Uh, had an opportunity to break here, Urawa. He's able to find that pass in midfield. It's Esaka who initially starts it off. The first touch into Sekine, who returns it into the run of Esaka. Plenty of power. It's a good height for Higashiguchi. Needed to go low towards the far post there, perhaps. Ataru Isaka. Sato is forced into a quick clearance. He's done really well there, Hirano. All the way through! Yuichi Hirano. Strong driving run from midfield, he just picks it up here and he just goes past these Gamba defenders like they're not even there. Almost found the far post, Yuichi Hirano. Here's Urawa, look for the winner. All swung into the box by Okubo. Was it Saka's shot initially that was 
charged down by that gun by the fence. Be going and looking at this again. This, this Saka again has a shot at goal. And once more, it is Suganuma who comes sliding across with his arms out, extended away from his body. But he's decided that it's a penalty. Hayato Shimizu. Isaka against Higashiguchi. No problem for Isaka. He puts that one away to open the scoring for the Urawa Reds. Gets his sixth goal of the season, his fourth goal for Urawa since moving across from Kashiwa Resol. So Patrick's quick to bounce on this one. Is there another goal to be made? Incredibly, it's handball has been given to Gamba Osaka. What a turnaround this one is. Iwanami, he's saying it's come off his chest. Gamba getting on with it straight away, launching it long into uh, Sato from Ideguchi. And it's Patrick who didn't give up on this. And that's made contact with his arms. Iwanami, if they're going to give a penalty to Urawa for the handball, of Suganuma, then uh, they've got not much choice there. They've got to give a penalty to Gamba. Patrick steps up and he's put it away as well for the equalizer. Nishikawa goes the right way. But it's just too accurate from Patrick who gets his ninth goal of the season. They've got bodies in the box. And Koizumi find a shot at goal, he can. Kashiguchi had to be alert to that one. He was strong to keep that one out from goal. Koizumi looking to drive things for Urawa as they chase this late winner, Okubo. Nishi. Oh, it's fallen into the part of Tanaka. And unbelievably, Higashiguchi has made another incredible save. Trying to keep it alive, eventually the referees decided that he's had enough. The players fall to the turf. That's confirmation of the final scoreline for you. It ends here at Saitama Stadium. Urawa Reds 1, Gamba Osaka 1. Shimitsu were hovering just above the drop zone and had collected two victories recently, giving themselves a little bit of breathing space against the Kashiwa side, who were winless in their last three and separated by just two points, an important fixture to ensure top-flight longevity. 16 minutes into the game and some amazing football from Kashiwa's Matea Savio. First, he wins the ball deep in his own half, plays in Cristiano and continues his lung-busting run forward. He receives the return pass, but can't quite finish for the opener. Into the 24th minute now, and a super effort from Yuta Kamiya. Outside the box, and that dipping effort isn't so very far away. Into the second half now, and an opportunity for Shimitsu. Tiago Santana flicks the ball into the box. It eventually falls to Kenta Nishizawa, who can't quite keep his knee over the ball, and blasts that one over the bar. Kashiwa were able to find the opening goal in the 53rd minute. Some very neat play outside the penalty area eventually finds Hiromu Mitsumaru and he keeps his left footed shot down, finding that far corner. Five minutes later and Shimitsu looking for the equaliser. Nishizawa finds Ronaldo. His side footed effort was probably going wide but goalkeeper Kim seung made sure that it wasn't going to cause any danger. 73 minutes in now, and Santana clips in a little ball from the left-hand side. Carlinhos Jr. gets his head to it. It comes back off the crossbar, and Benjamin Cololi can't quite put the rebound away. A 79th minute free kick for Shimitsu now. Cololi takes it, and that ball is moving all manner of ways in the air. Kim keeps his eye on it and just punches it away. 
Shimitsu still chasing that equaliser. Now from the 79th minute long throw, Akira Iabashi gets his head to it. Kololi thinks he's got that important touch to bring the team's level, but as the ball was flicked on, he was just offside. Last chance saloon for them here. From the dead ball 30 yards out, Kololi hits it well, but inches over the bar. Kashiwa come away with the win. Back-to-back -back wins for Vortis meant they'd finally climbed out of the bottom four ahead of this relegation fight. Yokohama pulled off a win prior to the break as well, but the bottom club had endured a poor campaign all season long and desperately needed another positive result. And what a start Yokohama got inside the first 10 minutes. Yusuke Matsuo with a measured, fabulous strike that hits the underside of the crossbar and puts the home team one up. But they were unwilling to sit back and just defend that lead. In the 20th minute, Saulo Minero outruns everybody, slides that shot to the goalkeeper's right and inside the far post for a 2-0 lead. But this one was shaping up to be a cracker. Kazuki Nishiwa with a shot from distance. Good save from Sven Brodersen. Ken Iwao is on hand to head the ball over his outstretched arm and pull one back for Vortis. With six minutes of time added on for stoppages in the first half, there was still time for more action. Seiko finding Minero here. The goalkeeper Kami Fukumoto thought about diving at his feet but hesitated and ended up with Monero slotting the ball between his legs, and that's 3-1 to the hosts. But Vortis was certainly up for making a contest of this one. Taisei Miyashiro with a sumptuous ball from the right-hand side, so difficult to defend, all Yuki Kakita had to do was put a foot on it. Three, two down and Vortis were now looking for the equalizer. Another perfect ball from a wide position, this time from Kishimoto. Mushaga Bakenga can't quite glance his header on target. But that goal would come and again it was quality work from wide positions. Kazuki Nishia just chipping the ball over to the far post where Kakita was waiting and despite the scrambling goalkeeper's efforts, it's 3-3. So what were Yokohama going to do about that? Yuya Takagi had the answer. Desperate times for Vortis then as they tried to recover this one, but they would eventually make a mistake deep into injury time. Kazuma Watanabe catching the keeper off his line and brilliantly putting that one into an empty net for the 5-3 win. An important win for Yokohama then as they battle relegation. But when we return, we'll check in on the other Yokohama side who have slightly different ambitions to battle for. We're back with you on the J1 League Goal Zone, keeping up with all the highlights from round 32 of the Meiji Yasuda J1 League. We shine the light on Vissel next as they continue on their charge for the best finish in club history. A 5-1 hammering of Urawa before the break kept Kobe tucked inside the top three and looking good to take the final AFC Champions League qualification spot. The hosts had a Vispa in their sights next, a side in good form recently, and would give their star-studded Vissel cast a run for their money. Mark Richmond has your commentary. Juan Ma. Well, with the sort of goal-scoring form he's been in of late for in his last three matches, you can forgive him for taking that shot on, although the angle was absolutely covered, but uh, when you're in that... Uh, Sort of a rich vein of goal scoring form. 
Sergi, it's a lovely ball that's broken the lines. It's gone right through. Driving effort at the end, which was a very good one by Boyan Kurkic. It's very clever play. They spread it out wide with their fullbacks attacking, and it's occupied the interest of a couple of uh, the Avispa players. And all of a sudden, a channel was opened up uh, right in between those two defensive midfielders. Here is Lincoln. Buto, as we'd expect, hugging the flanks now. Buto! Target. Well, that's the position that he prefers a lot more. Murakami went down with the save straight at him, but uh, Muto has actually feasted a lot more whenever he's uh, had the opportunity to go down the flanks. Atsuse available for the cross to the far post. Douglas! There's your last gasp winner, perhaps. We did say. He's hardly had a sniff, but a goal scorer and a predator of his repute just needs one. He had it, and he's not a Visser, perhaps further clear of Nagoya in third spot. All game long, the danger has come from that left-hand side. The deliveries, the better deliveries have come from this left-hand side and Hatsuse. And once again, he hangs up a peach and for Douglas, that is appetizing. A win which takes Visor Kobe three points ahead of Nagoya. 1-0 to the home side. Still in with a chance of upsetting the almost runaway league leaders, Marinos had another chance to pick up the points as they hosted Consadole. The visitors had been inconsistent throughout their campaign and weren't expected to be much trouble for the league's top attacking force, which also included the league's top scorer. Shazad Haq has your commentary. Taking a shot, oh, what a goal that is! It looked like it was gonna be a speculative attempt, but Daiki Suga, let's fly. The angle seemed to be against him. Takaoka couldn't do much about that Thunderbolt. Not easy from there, but it absolutely rocketed in. Just cutting away from the keeper. Free header, that's a great save. Can they scramble it away? They just about do it. Tomoki Iwata does enough. Ah, it's a free header, isn't it? From Ta Takamine. Great save from Takaoka. He should finish here, and it is slowed in. Aoki scores, but the flag goes up well that is offside Elbert floated in oh they have got the equalizing goal the changes have had their effect there has been a little bit of a reaction. It is disappointing for Sapporo. It's the substitute, Kenyu Sugimoto, who rises high as he's good in the air. They got a bit of a running jump on that one. Tanaka was pretty much stationary. And that is disappointing for Sapporo. Amano. Delamano! Oh, that is quite the comeback. Amano across to Dyson Maida. Two goals in three minutes. That's completely turned this around for Yokohama F. Marinos. They still believe. Well, that is remarkable. Today, 
It's almost that the six minutes have elapsed. And the referee has seen enough. Heartbreak. Absolute heartbreak. Final score here at the Nissan Stadium. It's Yokohama F. Marinos 2, Hokkaido Consul Sapporo 1. Yeah, of course. Um, every, every week, every game, uh, three points is important. Um, I think it's more. What's more important uh, is to understand how you take the three points, and I think we will find tonight there was uh, a game of really two halves where we were so passive in the first half. We weren't aggressive uh, in, in closing down. We weren't aggressive in, in keeping possession. And uh, in the second half, I've got to give the players a lot of credit because they persisted. Uh, we kept asking questions, um, and in the end, they got the two goals to win the game. Uh, we, we have to fight uh, till our last breath, um, it's as simple as that. Um, I think tonight at times, we, if we're honest, we were a little bit fortunate. You know, we could have conceded a second goal which would have made it a lot harder. Uh, but having said that, uh, I, I think we could see that the character of the, the team that uh, you know, we kept fighting tonight uh, and that has to be the case next week and for the remainder of the season. From the top of the table to the relegation zone, Oita had seen a recent uptick in form but were still five points away from safety. Their opponent Sundai sat a point behind and hadn't found a win in three. Another battle to determine who stays in J1 next season. Not much action in this one until six minutes from the break. Hokuto Shimoda's curling cross finds Kohei Isa who can't direct his header on target. First chance for Oita in the second half came in the 50th minute. Kohei Issa runs through, drives his left-footed shot against the post. Goalkeeper Jakub Slowik can't find the ball in the air and is unaware of Arata Watanabe creeping up to tug home the opener. One nil up then, Oita looking for a second here in the 55th minute. From the dead ball, Hokuto Shimoda not close enough. Eagle eyes from the officials in the 60th minute. Off the ball, Slowik tangles with Yamato Machida. With his hand around his neck, Machida is brought to the ground in the penalty area. A yellow card for Slowik and a spot kick for Owita. Watanabe steps up, hits that one with power, and it's 2-0 to the hosts. Not a good sequence for Slowik, that's for sure, who having got his hand to it, would like to have kept it out. Oita now looking for a third in the 66th minute. An outswinging corner finds Enrique Trevisan. He couldn't get his header on target though. An acrobatic attempt of note from Felipe Cardoso in the 93rd minute, but all to no avail. Sendai register another loss as they fall to Oita 2-0. Oita winning their relegation fight then, an important three points to help their cause. Sagan, meanwhile, did themselves no favours in their battle for third after being held to a 1-1 draw by Shonan. Urawa with a similar scoreline, sharing the spoils with Gamba. Kashiwa edged out Shimitsu by a goal, while Yokohama took a big three points after an entertaining eight-goal contest at home against Tokushima. Kobe clinical in their 1-0 win, while the Marinos came from a goal down to win against Consadole. So the Marinos keep up their title chase with that win, nine points adrift of Kawasaki, with six more rounds left to play. Kobe maintain their hold on third, with Nagoya leading the chasing pack just three points behind. At the bottom, another huge effort by Yokohama in this round sees them move off the bottom after they make it back-to-back -back wins. Sendai, having struggled with relegation from last season, remains stuck in an all-too-familiar position, anchoring the bottom. 777. That's the number of goals scored this season. With six more rounds to go, 
We'll keep a close eye on what your end of season jackpot number will be. So stay with us here on the J1 League Goal Zone. I'm Steve Dawson and we'll see you next time. อย่าลืมไลค์และ Subscribe นะครับ Like Subscribe Push Notification Like Subscribe Push Notification